Shabbos, Dav Kuf Lamed Dalet. Today's email comes to us from Yossi Sounders from the UK, from the Jewish Weekly. Long email, how we could do different things to improve MDY. One of the things he would like to start is sponsoring emails. He'd like to be the first one to sponsor emails. So thank you, Yossi, for thinking about us. We have a daf, at least a full Ahmed, full of different remedies. Many of them come from Abaya's famous stepmother. And she says, a compress to heal most wounds consists of seven parts fat, one part wax. Rava says one part wax, one part resin. In fact, he spoke about this in public and the sons of Manyumi, the doctor, were extremely sad about this. This was their source of living and they ripped Kriya. So he says, listen, don't worry about it. I have one more trick up my sleeve. If somebody washes their face and doesn't dry their face properly, they'll grow boils. And what do you do? You take beet juice and you wash your face with beet juice. Even though the mission tells us that you're not allowed to grind cumin on Shabbos, and you're not allowed to mix really well oil and wine on Shabbos, but on Yontif it's allowed. Cumin you could use for food, so you could use it for mila. Chayla she'en by sakana. There's no danger to this chayla. On Shabbos it's also to mix the wine and the oil, even without beating it really well. According to Remeir, it's mutter. Remeir himself was sick and he refused to beat the to, to mix the wine and the oil. They said, but you hold it smutter. He says, but I don't want to go against my friends. For others, he passing the smutter. For himself, he was a machmer. You're not allowed to put mustard seeds through a strainer because it looks like boirer. On the other hand, you're allowed to put an egg and take the egg white and put it into the mustard through the mustard strainer. That doesn't look like boirer because at the end of the day, the yolk is also going to go through the strainer. You're not allowed to sweeten up the mustard seeds by putting a wooden coal in the mustard seeds because what happens is the mustard seeds eventually extinguish the coal and that's mechaba. If it's a metal coal then it's okay even if it extinguishes because there's no ashes that are left over whereas in the wooden coal we have ashes that are left over. Putting meat, a barbecue on Yantav where the juices of the meat are going to extinguish the coals is not a problem because it's considered EF shar. The meat tastes a lot better when it's fresh and that's the only way to do it. To make cheese on Yantav, which is Baina, would be also because you could do it before Yantav. In fact, cheese that's older, aged cheese, tastes better than the new... Yeah, if you make it today, the cheese will taste okay, but not as good as it was done the day before. So that's considered Efshar. It's possible, and therefore it's also to do it on Yantav. Lisha, which is kneading the dough, is mutter to do on Yantav because we don't have another option. It's considered Efshar. It tastes a lot better when you do it today. Abaye's stepmother says, when you put a sleeve over the brismila, be careful that the, the hem of the sleeve, which is full of loose threads, is not on the actual wound because if a thread gets stuck there and then you pull off the sleeve, it could cause the baby to become a krushavcha, and a krushavcha is not allowed to marry somebody, the kahal from the Jewish nation. She herself, Abaye's stepmother, would make a lining in the sleeve so that this doesn't happen. Abaye says, if you don't have one of these sleeves, what you could do is you could take some sort of cloth that has a hem and in this way the hem will actually help us you put the hem on the part of the mila that doesn't have a wound and it'll stick to the mila so that it doesn't come off and the smooth part you put on the wound other things that Abai's mother said is if you see that the baby's opening to go to the bathroom gedolim, is not there so you rub oil there and you put the baby to the sun and you see where it's clear that's where the opening is supposed to be you take a piece of barley which is sharp and you cut an X an opening you don't use a, a metal object because that could cause swelling if a baby doesn't nurse well you take a cup of coals you pour it out on a flat surface you put it by his mouth the reason he's not nursing because his mouth is cold you warm up the mouth if a baby is not breathing well so you take the afterbirth and you put it on him if the baby's really small, you take the small opening first and then the larger part of the afterbirth comes second. In other words, to show that it's gonna, the baby's going to go from small to large. If the baby is bloated, so you take the larger part, the large opening, and put it first and then the smaller part. So that shows that the baby's going to become smaller. If a baby is extremely red or yellow, that's a sign that the blood hasn't been absorbed well into the body and you have to wait for the brismila. 
The Gemara tells us two identical stories, basically, with Reb Nosan Abavli. There was a woman who both of her children died during the Brismila. The third one she brought to Reb Nosan Abavli, and he said, look, the baby is too red to do Brismila, let's wait. They waited, and the baby lived, and she named the baby Nosan Abavli. Another time, the baby was yellow, two of its brothers died, he checked and he saw that there's no damn bris. In order to be mekayim the mitzvah bris you need damn bris. It's also very dangerous to do a bris like that. The baby could die. They waited, and sure enough, the baby lived. They named the baby Nasan Abavli. The Mishnah tells us that you're permitted to wash the baby before the bris to strengthen the baby and after the bris. And then the Mishnah says, you do zilo if you sprinkle the water. Machlaik is in the Gemara, what's going on here? According to Rabbi Yehudah and Rabbi Baravua, you only sprinkle the baby, you cannot rinse the baby in a bath, only sprinkle water, only on the first day. And Rebbe Lezben Azayah argues and says, you could wash the baby for three days, and we see this from Shechem, that they were in a lot of pain on the third day. You see that the third day is also a Sakana. According to Rava, the Tanakam hold, in the first and second day, you could wash the baby regularly. Only on the third day, you have to sprinkle water. Rebbe Lezben Azayah says, even on the third day, you could sprinkle water, you could wash the baby. The Zariah from the Brisa like Rebbe Lezben Azariah from Shechem, and the Brisa says that it's not a true raya from Shechem, and the Gemara explains because Shechem, they were older, but by a baby perhaps, the baby heals quicker, maybe by the third day, he's not considered in a Sakana. There's a story where Rava Paskin to someone that he could wash his baby on the first day, regular bath, and then he got sick, and he said perhaps because I was Mechuluk on Rav Yehuda and Rav Baravua, even though the Brisa says like Rava, but from the Mishnah, it seems like there's a missing a word, Af Marchitzim, which sounds like the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Baravua, Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi and Paskin, that the Allah is like Rabbi Lazar and Azariah, the Allah wash the baby, his entire body, all three days, even with water that was boiled on Shabbos because of the Sakana. According to Rav, you're allowed to put oil and wine mixture on a wound on Shabbos, it's not considered Shrika Samamanim, according to Shmuel, you, it's considered Shrika Samamanim, so you put it above the wound and it drips into the wound, and there's a brisa that says, like Shmuel, this that you're not allowed to put the oil and wine mixture on a bandage, even if the bandage is on the body, off the body, is because of the chashash that you're going to squeeze and you'll be over on Shrita. Rags that are new, in other words, they've never been on a wound before, they are also to put on Shabbos because they have a power of healing, but if they were already put on a wound, it's mutter to put on on Shabbos. Have a wonderful day.